Hey, it's me, Evil Tutan. And I hope you guys are ready for some backstory and for some more Trilby's notes. Here we go. Hello and welcome back to the hotel lobby of the Glen Bronwyn Hotel. Well, I've already established and I, I, I said it so many times that there's going a lot of things are going to happen story-wise. Uh, but also, there's you are going to hear more amazing soundtrack. Uh, I, I don't remember the uh, the name of that. Um, that there's one guy who who made all the soundtracks for for the Yahtzee games. Um, he's definitely I, I I'm gonna research him, <laughs> and then I'm gonna see if he you know if he does any other work. All right, so this is the changed hotel. Um, obviously, I don't have to tell you that these are the same rooms. Uh, we haven't been in the bar so far, but here it is. Um, I am trying. I'm. Uh, I'm going to try to show you the, all of the hotel, right? Uh, the, the the whole hotel. So both the normal and uh, the the shifted version, because uh, this is going to happen quite a bit. This is a little bit of a Silent Hill, Dark World, Bright World mechanism. So let's look around. Perhaps the alternative hotel bar had been like the real one at some point in the past, but it had long since fallen into disarray and appeared to have been used for very sinister purposes. That's true. Um, there's something on the counter, as you can see, so we have to look counter. In keeping with the alternate hotel's team, if the alternate hotel's team, the furniture looked like someone had been hurled against them with absolute fatal force, lying on the bar in a pool of gore was a pair of long nose pliers. All right, see, this is a word, for example, that I was unfamiliar with uh, <laughs> before I played this game. So if it wasn't for for Trilby's ability to describe items that he sees, uh, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, text parser games um, would be a whole lot, you know, uh, much harder for, for me. Uh, Especially because text parser games, this uh, obviously Sierra and King's Quest, uh, the first games, they had text parser interfaces too. And imagine me, like being seven, eight, nine years old, um, uh, barely speaking any word of English. Oh, oh, we have a little texture error right here. You see that? Trilby's leg. But this is not, you know, I mean, who cares about that? Um, so yeah, imagine me, seven, eight years old English, barely speaking my first words of English uh, and then having to play text parser games. <laughs> it was so funny, I don't know, I just... All I did was open... Open... <laughs> that, that's pretty much all I did and if it didn't work, uh, I'd call my dad and cry. So yeah, that, uh, that much for text parser games, but now I'm much older and I am very versed in the words in in the uh <laughs> nice point i'm trying to make right no i'm older and now i'm versed in the ways of words and how to use them now i can type open door so this is what 16 years of learning english <laughs> has finally enabled me to do anyway let's look at the corpse C cor corpse the body had been completely flayed and still glistened wet with blood. Wetly, ooh. This is a word I haven't heard that often, wetly. The hands and one of the feet were held in place around the door with six inch nails. Alright, so you are going to use the pliers on the corpse. And it's the guy in the rope again. I wonder what this deal is. If only I had played this game before. If only I knew, but I don't. I have no idea what's going on. How do I push the buttons? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I can I can do it. Here we go. Look once again. I want to we we, have, we are going to look a lot because uh, text parser games have of course one disadvantage. Uh, you can miss a lot of of text and dialogue that is put into the game. For example, the conversation we had with Abed and uh, Showan upstairs, uh, we probably could have talked about so much more, but, you know, since there aren't any dialogue options to choose from, it's hard to discover them all, so that's just... There's going to be no text parser interface in the, f in the next game, by the way. In the final game, he went back to a point and click. The gloomy lavatories were in a state of advanced disrepair. That's also a nice word, disrepair. 
One of the cubicle doors was hanging off its hinges and the mirror above the counter was broken. Right. Well, so once again, we are going to look counter. The counter had two sinks and was covered in filth and mold. To my surprise, a brand new sealed envelope was sitting between the bis <laughs> the bazaars. So let's take the envelope. Baffled, I took the envelope. It was strangely bulky and tore it open. A white pill bottle and a note fell out of fell out of it into my hand. I hear enclosed the note with this report. Trilby. I could read this in Lenkman's voice, but I should. Trilby, if you're reading this, then you too have seen the hotel change. At present, I have no idea if the alternative hotel is part of the ethereal realm. Uh, that, that's not good. It's part of the ethereal realm or some kind of construct, a pocket dimension. There is a definite correlation between one's level of agitation and one's tendency to reality shift. A fear is your enemy. It leaves you shining like a beacon for whatever evil brought us to this place. Enclosed is a bottle of tranquilizers from my personal first aid kit. When you find yourself shifting into the other place, take a pill and try to calm down, and the real hotel will return. Do not let it concern you. I am researching the phenomenon. Your task is to find the foe. Good luck, Agent Lenkman. Lenkman's letter raised more questions than it answered. I pocketed the pill bottle. It's true, he knows about the foe. So uh, he said that we should, you know, take pills if we get agitated. And there we go. It quickly took effect. I felt the anxiety lift from the pit of my stomach and my dismal surroundings seemed to feel less imposing. Then I felt that strange sensation again of lightheadedness and detachment as the world around me began to quiver. And here we go. Back to the normal hotel. Yep. Nothing's going on here. Everything's fine. Let's go to the kitchen. Open door. But the kitchen doors refuse to open. Whatever could it mean? <laughs> Someone commented, uh, I got so far, uh, this channel, so far, uh, I got two comments about my accent. Uh, one said, you remind me so much of Klaus from American Dad, so... This is for you, I'm Klaus <laughs> from American Dead. I can't really, yeah, but I, I do I do get where it comes. Oh, this is, yeah, I messed it up, you guys. I, I messed it up. Help. Uh, open door. Father, why? No. I can't even open, er. Uh, can I? There must be a hotkey for bringing back the last command. Father, why? Ah, uh, mm, this is not supposed to happen. Ah, oh, it was an illusion. Oh no. You guys, just hallucinating. Ah, Klaus was just hallucinating. So yeah, you should pay attention to Stoka Cola. No, Stoka Sola, I'm sorry. This wine bottle and this... This fits strangely with Trilby if you stand in front of it. This picture fuses straight. Is this Trilby as a cup? Is this the Trilby cup? Oh my god. What what sick fetish. Look at this. This fits perfectly. This is... I'm telling you. I'm, I'm onto something. I'm onto something. Also notice that this arcade is out of order. Out of order. And... Uh, but it works perfectly fine in the dark world. Yeah, and the other comment said... Uh, Colonel Landa, is that you? So, no, I'm not Colonel Landa. But I can be, if that's what you like. I'm not Christoph Waltz, though. I wish I... I wish I was. I should be Christoph Waltz. I should think about switching careers to becoming Christoph Waltz. Okay, Ugh, I'm always typing open. <laughs> Look painting. I was frankly astonished that Matthew Defoe's painting had survived the emulation of Defoe Manor. Yeah, I'm, I'm astonished too. As I stared at it, it seemed that the surrounding room began to blur until only the painting was in focus. I fancied I could hear the creaks and whispers of the faux manor's hallways. I felt a bizarre urge to reach out and touch the painting. No, Trilby. Well, I guess... touch... painting. <laughs> As I stepped closer, I could feel sound becoming muffled and my head spinning, as if I were about to faint. My hand, as if pulled by an invisible string, reached out towards the clumsy brush strokes. Oh, look! You know that room, you guys! And once again, it's July 28th. 
1821. Matthew Defoe is 15 years old today. He is excitedly putting the finishing touches to a painting which his father, fa fa father, oh god, commented on encouragingly the first time he has ever been supportive of Matthew's artistic learnings. Matthew is now convinced that his father is lifting from the mysterious depression that has plagued him for as long as either of them can remember. Now, he intends to make the painting absolutely perfect before showing it again. Knock knock. Master Matthew, Sir Roderick has requested your presence in the trophy room. Thank you, James. I don't know his voice. And if you would be so good to inform me that I will now be retiring for the night. Very good, James. Maybe you should sound like Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Very good, James. Remember this? This is my friend, Mr. Smith. He's an... Uh, I, oh god, I'm not prepared. Well, just a scholar, hardly even that, just someone with an interest in the subject. And he has offered to assess the figurine I brought back from my travels. I wasn't aware you had a family, so Rorik. Is your wife home too? Regrettably, Belinda is no longer with us. Oh, I'm sorry. Quite alright, you couldn't have known. She succumbed to illness shortly after Matthew was born. I gave him a voice in five days, I know, but... I finished the painting I showed you, father. Oh, good. Well, Mr. Smith, what do you think of the piece? It's an intriguing little puzzle, actually. The design is reminiscent of a few Central African tribal gods I'm aware of. But to be honest, I've never seen anything like this before. May I ask how you acquired it? I'm glad you asked. It was 20 years ago when I was a younger man on my first travels in the Dark Continent. We were traveling along the west coast when our bearers spotted a ship that had run aground. It was an English clipper named the Sea Angel and a short exploration revealed that every single crewman had just disappeared. Of course, we immediately sent a letter to the nearest embassy to report the finding. But the point is, it was on the lowest deck of the ship that I found this very figurine you see before you today. What an extraordinary tale! But how do you account for there being an African tribal carving on a British vessel? We were as confused as you are, it wasn't a slave trading vessel, but there must have been a negro on the crew. <gasps> you guys! It has been a personal mystery of mine ever since. I was hoping you could shed a little light on the matter. Such language in, in 1821. But there is more to tell. I haven't even begun to recount the strange events that have surrounded this artifact. Would you care for a glass of brandy? Thank you, that would be most kind. Matthew, fetch brandy from the kitchen and some glasses. Yes, father. You know what was cool back then? Nobody had to drive. You could always drink. Every time you visited someone, you could drink. Well, anyway, um, here's a leather apron. Here's a machete. And here's a welding mask. And I don't know why they have a welding mask in their house, to be honest. I, I just, I guess it's just something that I always... This is the one thing that I always ask myself about John Defoe. is like, how do they have these specific items in their house? in an English country manner in 1821. <laughs> but anyway, also you can see that there's a door on the left, right? So let's get some glasses. Matthew took the brandy bottle and a pair of appropriate glasses. Bang, bang. Hello. You haven't tried to speak to me in a while. Bang, bang. I did another painting today. I showed it to father and he said it was promising. I keep trying to tell him about you, but he never listens. You haven't knocked for me in so long, I was beginning to wonder. Bang bang! Hey, do you want to see my painting? Bang bang! <laughs> I'm just not sure how I get it through the door. Yeah, this is... 
This is such an infuriating, I don't know why he put this in, but th this might take a few minutes because I don't remember. Put, pe wait a minute, look door. Look, always look. There are three doors here, the one to the pa to the east led to the dining hall and the rest of the house. To the north was the, pan the pantry and to the west was the door Matthew had never been through, which was kept permanently locked. Well, this didn't tell me anything really. Uh, well, I can't open the door, that much should be clear. The door was locked as always, but there was a substantial gap of about an inch at the bottom of the door. See, this is what you need. You need the gap. <laughs> you need the gap. This would be a slogan. I want a paid advertisement for that. You need the gap. Gap, 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 gap. But anyway. Put... You're listening to radio. 51, 51, 51. Put painting through gap. I hope this does it. I know, I knew it, I knew it, there was something. How did this work? Let me remember, you, you have to do certain steps in... Give painting. That didn't make sense to Matthew. Give painting to... Boy. That might have made sense in another time and place. <laughs> no, I think this is the only time and place where this makes sense. Matthew will be dead soon, but he doesn't know that, of course. It certainly doesn't make sense when Trilby gets here. Um, oh, wait, maybe we can... Ah, of course. Matthew's dead. <laughs> I can't remember it. I knew it. This is, this is the... This is what text parser interfaces do to you. Okay. Use painting gap. I should probably be more specific. Use painting with gap I should probably be more specific <laughs> wait do we even have the painting maybe it's uh, probably wait that might be it no, okay so obviously we have the painting How could I, Trilby, possibly have known what Matthew was carrying that day? Oh yeah, if you put, uh, if you press tab, you can access the inventory. But, you know, because <laughs> it, Trilby is the narrator. Uh, okay, so the episode's over anyway. Uh, there are two things we have to do. I have to figure out how to put the painting through here because the, 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 there was there was a specific step you had to take. But I remember get, I, I get stuck at this part every time. Uh, and also, I have to tell you that uh, <laughs> I have to tell you a story because I used we used to live in a house when I was a small child, and it had a door exactly like that. I was never in there, and then one day we just sold the house. So anyway, I hope uh, this story keeps you interested <laughs> enough because it's going to come, and I'm going to upload the second episode, uh, the next episode immediately after that. So you know, both episodes go online this evening. So see you in a couple minutes if you decide to continue watching. Until then.